Hi guys. As you know, unit number two, it's about art. Art, of course, is very extensive. So that's why art is divided in several branches. One of the main branches is visual art. We have already talked about drawing, which belongs to this branch. And now is the turn of painting. Painting, which is one of the most ancient expressions of art. So, that is why it's considered among the seven fine arts. Along with music, dance, sculpture, literature, architecture, and cinema. These are the seven fine arts. But of course, there are several other um, expressions of art. When it comes to painting, we talk about media. The media used in painting, media is in plural, singular form is medium. And what is medium? Medium refers to the materials used by the artist or the type of paint or pigment as well as the type of support or surface used for painting. Type of painting that we can mention there are a lot, but the main type of paint, of paint that we can mention includes tempera, digital painting, which is the one that we use with our fingers, oil, which is this, and as you notice, oil comes always in two forms, okay? So there are several brands, but the presentation will be always in two. When it comes to acrylic, which are this, acrylics can come either in bottles or as well as oil, it can come in tubes, all right? So this is in regards of acrylic. Now, what's watercolor? Watercolor is this. This is watercolor. Why it's called watercolor? Because in order for us, to be able to paint, we need to add water, okay? We need to add water to the paint so we can obtain what we need, right? There is the reason of the need. We also have pastel. These are pastels, or as well called chalk pastel, right? These are oily chalks that we can use for painting. As well, we can use aerosol paint or spray painting, like for example, when we're um, using any other type of surfaces, like wolf. As well, we can paint using mixed media, which means that we're not using only one type of paint, but several type of paint. Then in regards of support, <laughs> or surface we can use anything anything that we have handy can become our surface however the most common surfaces are canvas like this one this is an oil painting presented on a canvas that as you know it's a type of cloth and this presentation so this is canvas but this is not the only surface that we can use. As I was mentioning, we have several other options, including wood or hardwood panels. We can also include paper, any type of paper, cloth, wall, even rocks. Even rocks can become our surface. Now, what's actually painting? What's the definition for painting? Painting is the practice of applying paint or pigment, um, color, or other medium to a solid surface. This is called the matrix or support. The medium is commonly applied to the base with either a brush or other implements, for example, knives, sponges or airbrushes, okay? 
Now, the final work is also called painting. That means that the word painting can refer to both the action and the result. Now, this is the definition. Now that we know what painting is, let's go and check some of the techniques. Of course, in regards of painting, we can talk about movements, we can talk about styles, but that is too extensive and we're not going to go that deep into that topic. So we're going to check just the most common techniques that we can find within painting. The first one, acrylic painting. What's acrylic painting technique? It's when the painting is executed in the medium of synthetic acrylic resins. Acrylics dry rapidly, serve as a vehicle for any kind of pigment, and are capable of giving both the transparent brilliance of watercolor and the density of oil paint. So it's a combination between uh, watercolor and oil, the result, and this is how it looks like. Alright, so we can obtain both, right, the benefits from watercolor and the oil paint. This is just the first technique. Now let's check the other one. Oil painting. What's oil painting? Traditional oil painting techniques often begin with the artist sketching the subject onto the canvas with charcoal or tin paint. Oil paint is usually mixed with linseed oil, artist great mineral spirits, or other solvents to make the paint thinner, faster, or slower drying. That means that for us to create something like this one, we use the oil paints plus some other um, elements that we need to mix so we can obtain the desired uh, result. How does an oil painting look like? Like this, all right? So most of the, all these paintings that we can see belongs to this technique, to the oil paint. Regardless of the movement or style, we can obtain the technique. Okay, we can use the oil paint as a technique. Alright, the other technique is watercolor painting. Watercolor painting is a method in which the paints are made of pigments suspended in a water-based solution. Watercolor refers to both the medium and the resulting artwork. Now, in the pure watercolor technique, often referred to as the English method. No white or other opaque pigment is applied and color intensity and tonal depth being built up by successive transparent washes on damp paper. It means that the ones that I, that I show you, this one, it's a modern presentation of watercolor because it shouldn't have white or black. In the English method, the white color is obtained by the surface, meaning the paper or any other surface that we're using. And of course, we're going to get darker colors by adding less water. It means the more water we add to the pigment, the clearer the color would look like. And the less water that we add, the darker the color or the higher intensity we will obtain with those colors. Now, we have the definition of the technique. Now let's see an example of this. Okay, so this bird was painted using watercolor technique. So this is a watercolor painting, right? The next one is the pointillism. The pointillism, it's also called divisionism and chromoluminarism. In painting, the practice of applying small strokes or dots of color to a surface so that 
from a distance, they visually blend together. That means that we're not using a large stroke to create our design, but instead we're using just small strokes, okay? Like making small dots using the paint. This is how it looks like. When we are using different types of paint or pigments to create the pythalism, this is what we can obtain, right? We can also use the pythalism technique with colors or with pencils, but this refers to, to the technique using specifically paint. Right? So it, it looks different to to what it will look like when we are using colors or any other type of media. The last technique that we're going to talk about is the collage. Collage in the modernist sense began with Cubans. The Cubans painters George Break and Pablo Picasso. According to some sources, Picasso was the first to use the collage technique in oil painting. But what's exactly a collage? Um, a collage is, in some cases or sometimes, something including magazine and newspaper clippings, ribbons, paint, bits of colored or handmade papers portions of other artwork or texts, photographs and other found objects glued to a piece of paper or canvas. It means that when we are uh, using or when we are making a collage, we are using more than one uh, media. We are using paint, colors, paper, magazine, newspaper, anything. So at the end, we can obtain a specific image. Let's see an example of this. This is a dog seen from a very long distance. We may not notice all the elements composing this picture or this painting. But if we give a close regard to this, we can notice here some pieces of either magazine or newspaper, some paint, and some other elements including probably uh, pieces of paper or handmade designs. So, that was all for today. Um, I hope that you have a clear idea of the different painting techniques.